Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on what is happening across the Western Atlantic. And so I hope that you're all having a really wonderful day this far. And so in this video, we're going to be looking at a few things. We'll be looking at the Saharan earlier forecast, as that is uh, the main part of my thumbnail. Uh, there's going to be a mass of Saharan dust entering the Caribbean this weekend. And we're also going to be talking about, of course, what is currently happening. In. We're going to touch on the ENSO region as well as the sea surface temperatures. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, let's go ahead and kickstart things uh, with this satellite imagery, of course. And we can see here that there isn't too much happening across the Caribbean right now, as usual, uh, for this time of year. And so uh, we see some cloud clusters entering the region in the vicinity of uh, the Eastern Caribbean. Closer to Jamaica, we see that little cloud cluster. Now that could make its way across the island and induce some rainfall activity uh, later this morning and we also see more of that activity as we progress to the northwestern and western parts of the uh, Caribbean basin but there isn't much there are no areas of major convection right now uh, that is to be concerned about so that is what is happening on a satellite and uh, let's now go ahead and talk about the currency surface temperatures and so taking a look at the sea surface temperature map right now, we can definitely see that uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of a very warm ocean temperatures right now. And I mean, that is typical for right now. But as we're going to be progressing later into spring and eventually into summer, we're going to be seeing that gradual warm up. So uh, currently in the Caribbean, we're seeing mainly that 26 degrees Celsius isotherm, some areas maybe a degree warmer or cooler than that but uh, we're gonna see that gradual rise in temperature same story for the Gulf of Mexico uh, seeing mainly 25 and uh, 25 degrees Celsius and below that in the Gulf but uh, this is a major spot during the hurricane season and as I mentioned that the hurricane season is now 92 days away so we're less than 100 days from the official start of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season but of course now isn't the time to be concerned because of course no tropical cyclone activity is likely now but uh, going back to the Gulf of Mexico so as we head into the peak of the hurricane season usually August going to September uh, when we have systems making their way uh, into the region that is usually a hot spot because we see a lot of rapid intensification last year that was a story with Ian uh, before that we had Ida and of course in 2020 we had Laura as well as other systems that made their way into the uh, area so that is a major spot every hurricane season it usually brews some of our strongest cyclones for that particular season so uh, as you're going to be progressing into the next couple of weeks we're going to be seeing that gradual warm-up as I said so it's not going to be today we're barely seeing anything favorable for development and then by tomorrow it's going to be there no it's going to be a gradual thing that is noticed as time progresses all right and so now let's go ahead and move on to the ENSO and this chart here is really to depict uh, the current value of the ENSO region and uh, we can see what it was before that but there we have the latest value over to the top right side of your screen which is minus 0.4 so that is indicating that we are in the neutral phase which is between minus 0.5 and 0.5 uh, and that is in degrees Celsius below or above normal so we're not in an El Nino and we're not in a La Nina. So just in between those two phases. And and it was forecasted that as we're going to be heading into the spring, we're going to be seeing uh, and so neutral conditions and then possibly El Nino conditions as we head into later this year. But of course, uh, nothing is set right now. There can be a lot of changes between now and then. And the major concern with this is in terms of the hurricane season. So 
there's a, a pretty good chance at this point in time that we could see maybe a near normal season uh somewhat maybe of a replica of last year but uh that is all going to be dependent on the conditions across the tropical atlantic that would help to induce uh cyclone activity and so that is something that we're going to be uh continually discussing as the season approaches and uh speaking of in terms of last hurricane season and name retirement the hurricane committee meeting is scheduled for the end of march and so around that time we'll uh, we'll be hearing which name or names will be retired from last season but one that is absolutely certain is ian so it's just to hear what the replacement name is going to be so if we're not certain about any other name the name that is likely to be retired with certainty is ian so uh that is something that is going to be happening later this month but now let's go ahead and move on to the saharan air layer forecast and so we're looking at this uh map right here and where we see more of those neon colors that is where we see uh that is where we have more abundant dry air within the region so we see that it is quite dominant right now across the tropical atlantic and the saharan dust of course it, it is from the saharan desert and it is carried by the trade to the caribbean sometimes reaching the u.s so where we see as i said we have more abundant dry air within those areas of more of those neon colors and uh, some of that is already affecting some areas such as uh, northern South America and even down to the vicinity of Trinidad and Tobago but let's go ahead and look at the forecast of the uh, Saharan dust as we're going to be heading into the end of this week and this is for tomorrow on Thursday the second of the month so for this particular map right here where we have more of those darker brown shades that is what indicates more abundant dry air within the region so uh, not a whole lot to be seen in the caribbean at this time however as we head to friday we see that we have some of that massive dry air uh, that's saharan dust entering the southeastern caribbean and affecting areas such as northern south america the abc islands and of course the windward islands uh, possibly inclusive of dominica and also barbados and trinidad and tobago so uh, of course that saharan dust is a lot of dry air particles and that helps to reduce rainfall activity and usually when it is in abundance we see that brownish hue uh, those very hazy skies especially in the distance and it also has some uh, downsides to it in terms of health concerns so it can help to induce skin eye and throat irritation so it's best to stay indoors and as hydrated as possible as this mass is going to be entering the region and as we're going to be heading uh, further into the weekend of course going into Saturday the dust is going to be continuing its journey and of course uh, helping to induce those hazy conditions across more extensive areas so I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on this as time goes by and that is really it for right now so if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be weather wise.